Morning, 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 everybody. How are we all? Um, I am really excited on many counts. This is my first catch up with Lee Rubeck, who is the most incredible, inspirational <coughs> um, leadership and mindset coach. Um, flying all the way in from South Africa. I'm in the UK. We did have somebody from Papua New Guinea yesterday, so we could have expect somebody from all over the place. Um, and Lee and I have been meeting uh, every month to talk about property mindset. And today we are going to be talking about your massive goals that you've set. Well, I hope you've set them. And if you haven't, go and set them um, for 2024. Um, so on top of that, Lee and I have just been juggling with um, the new tech because we are using something called Restream. So I'm hoping that we are not only streaming to my social media, but we are also streaming to Lee's social media as well. So let's um, do a bit of an intro of both of us, Lee, uh, because obviously I'm potentially talking to your social media and you're potentially talking to mine. So please do give an introduction to yourself to anyone who doesn't know you. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to you wherever you're tuning in from around the world. Uh, as Emma said, my name is Lee Rubik, and I'm a mindset coach. Uh, I've been uh, helping entrepreneurs remove mind blocks and attract clients easily uh, for the past, since 2014, 2015 now. So uh, I've been at this from a, for a while. I'm from Johannesburg in South Africa, and just a bit more background in terms of my training. I was trained at the so-called Harvard of Professional Speaking Schools back in July 2014 in Boston. And uh, I've also been mentored by the late and great uh, Bob Proctor. So that's just a bit about me, and we'll get a bit more into his story and mine later. Thank you, Emma. Fantastic. So yeah, a quick introduction to me. Um, I am a property investor and educator. And I have a, a background in corporate. So I worked for L'Oreal in the UK and abroad. And I also um, have run a number of successful businesses that have won national awards. And then I have grown a rent to rent service accommodation business and sold that um, and also developed a 16 studio apartment hotel um, amongst lots of other things. So yeah, so I am um, really passionate about mindset and I actually met Lee three years ago? About, about three years ago. Yeah, yeah. A bit over three years ago. And I want, I, I reached out to Lee and I'd reached out to, I think, pretty much everyone else in the world, um, but I was still getting the same results. And um, inherently, if you're getting the same results, you need to do something different. And I just couldn't work out what to do. I'd read Think and Grow Rich five times. I'd done all of these things, but nothing was changing. Then when I met Lee and I, uh, Lee introduced me to, to Bob Proctor and all the ways of um, his training, suddenly Lee transformed my life. And in fact, even at the moment, we haven't had a chance to have a catch up, but things are happening so serendipitously that, yeah, I just feel on top of the world at the moment. Obviously, things go right, things go wrong. But inherently, yeah, it's been an absolute life changer for me. So I really wanted to follow on this uh, this month. And I know Lee and I um, love kind of talking about how our mindset affects property and, uh, you know, buying property, running property businesses, whatever it is. And it really does make an enormous difference. So if you're not getting the results that you want, sometimes it's not just about what you're physically doing on a daily basis. Sometimes it's actually what's happening in here. And it was once I 
understood that, that I was able to take responsibility and to know that I wasn't a victim. Because Lee will know, I was a bit of a victim in those days. Um, but now I know that I have control. I don't always know how to change certain things, but I've got the tools to search for those. Um, so yeah, so fantastically. Well, let's let's jump straight in. I know today we want to talk about these 2024 goals. Um, so yeah, let's let's kind of kick up kick off on your views of of goals basically and, and what they are um, and inherently what's stopping you from getting to your goals. So Emma, goals are very important as you know you've got to know where you're going you got to know the direction that you're heading in but here's the thing goal setting is an intellectual exercise goal achieving is a lawful process i want to repeat that and if you're taking notes write that down goal setting is an intellectual exercise goal achieving is a lawful process now, my mentor, uh, I mentioned him before, Bob Proctor, he used to say that success is 95% mindset and 5% strategy. Now, here's the thing. People get hung up on the strategy. You know, I just need the next strategy, the next big thing. Oh, I need to, you know, uh, learn what that person's doing. Or I need to figure this out. I need to get... You can have the best strategy in the world. If your mindset is not attuned to take advantage of it, you can forget about it. And I'll qualify that for you, if that sounds um, a bit out there. Why is it that you can find two people selling the same product, working in the same marketplace, serving the same demographic, working for the same sales manager, one is absolutely killing it and the other one's struggling to get by. What's the difference? Mindset, right, Emma? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, um, yeah, that is something that when you talk about setting goals is an intellectual exercise and achieving them is a lawful process. Well, these are these are the things that for me, I didn't have that toolbox. I didn't have that understanding and I was extremely frustrated especially hearing things, you know, when people talked about Think and Grow Rich, and I know that the book by Napoleon Hill, and I know when I, I came to you, I, I had literally already read it five times. And if anyone's read it, it's quite a hefty, chunky book. Yeah. And nothing was, <clears throat> nothing was coming of it. And one of the things amongst many of the things that I found out was, as you said, it's not just about um, the logical intellectual side of things uh, which is where I very much was and can, still can be I'm so logical I can completely miss out all my emotions and it's just this is the problem and this is the factual response of it um, whereas actually um, and especially in property because things go wrong all the time as 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 in life you know things always go wrong don't think that you're anything special if you've had things go wrong for you Everyone has things go wrong for them. Um, it's just some people tell you about it and some people don't. Some people dwell on it and some people don't. Mm -hmm. So then when you've talked about, you know, achieving your goals is a lawful process. Do you mind just sort of, yeah, talking a little bit more about that? What kind of that looks like? Um, because I know for me that was not necessarily new. I kind of heard of some of the things, but I just did not understand how to implement, especially when I was very logical. So everything is an expression of the mind. So we have to understand how the mind works, right? The amount of money we're earning in our business, how effective we are in terms of whatever business, if you're in a property business or whatever business you're in, how effective you are has got to do with behavior. It's got to do with your habitual patterns. It's got to do with your confidence, how you show up. And um, I think a big thing in terms of selling anything is to desensitize to rejection, right? Now, all those things I mentioned, the confidence, uh, the, the inability to, to, or the ability to, to, to not allow rejection to affect you, all of that is a subconscious thing. It's an habitual way of you showing up. 
Now you can get the best strategies. You can intellectually be aware of how to um, work these strategies in the marketplace. But if your paradigm, uh, which, which is a program, which is a mental program in your subconscious mind, is not attuned to the results you want, you're never going to get those results. Now, let's go a bit deeper. If you look at the dictionary definition, uh, Emma, uh, of paradigm, it's simply a pattern. So it's it's simply a pattern. And, you know, if you live with somebody, you could probably set a clock by them. They wake up at the same time every day, whether they grab the coffee mug, the TV remote, the um, toothbrush first thing in the morning, there's a routine or a pattern that they fall into. And this pattern takes them all through their day. I mean, you pretty much know what your day is going to look like, right? From the moment you open your eyes in the morning until you close them at night. And it's this paradigm that creates our results. And you know the, the, the saying, uh, old habits die hard, right? It's classic example. We're just moving into a new year now. You find the gyms are full of people, four to six weeks in. And I see it every year because I've been training for 20 years. <laughs> Four to six weeks in, Emma, and the gym empties out again. Why is that? People really want to get fit. They really want to, you know, live a healthier lifestyle. But if they don't shift the paradigm, which is creating the behavior, the habits, they literally fighting against themselves. And it's like this internal war is happening. And I promise you, the paradigm will always win out. So the thing is, you've got to install those new ideas into the paradigm. And when I say it's a lawful process... Everything in this universe operates by law. Everything. Like if we want more money, doesn't matter what religion or philosophy you subscribe to, you got to give more in order to receive more. Like if you've got a problem in terms of the amount of money you're earning, it's a simple thing. Just serve. Find a way to serve. Even if initially you're serving without getting any sort of a remuneration or reward for it, serve. By law, your good, the good that you're putting out will come back to you. So, you know, it's just certain things like that. And also, there's the law of the subconscious mind. Any idea that's impressed on the subconscious, so if you move your goal and all these ideas, beliefs into your subconscious, I promise you, your external world starts shifting and you'll see that happen. So that's what I mean when I say it's a lawful process. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And actually, again, like all things... As I said, you can read the same book multiple times, and I, and I do do that regularly. I listen to the same podcast multiple times. Um, you've trained me to rewrite the same paragraph hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, and and quite often, you, you know, we've all read a book, and and I hopefully, if you have read it the second time and thought, I don't, I don't remember reading this at all, and even short paragraphs. You know, after a couple of weeks, I'm suddenly like, really? I've been writing this out all this time and I still don't remember having, you know, heard this or or, or writing this. And it's it's very strange because we kind of we kind of change as we develop. Um, and one of the things that I've really been concentrating a lot and it's becoming more and more conscious, especially because I've got twin 18 year old boys. <laughs> um is those little things. So I would really like to live in a tidy house. You know, that's that's a dream of mine. But with three kids, that can be challenging. So it's, you know, it's the little things like, you know, you walk into the bathroom and there's a pair of my son's pants on the floor. So every time I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to say to him, and at the same time, I'm saying it to myself, if you can do those little things, if you can really get into the habit of doing those little things, then the big things will come because what I've tended to do is to go for the big things and neglect those little things. So like, as you say, you know, how do I feel today? How do I feel going into that property meeting? How do I feel meeting the estate agent? How do I feel tomorrow going to my big property investor group event? You know, how do I look? How do I feel? Have I washed my hair? Have I had it blow dried? You know, I'm, have I made myself look nice for me? Um, all of these kind of little things. Have I cleaned my teeth? Is it normal? Because for some people, these things are not normal. Like, you know, with little kids, 
you know, again, I, I know Lee and I have got youngsters, but my littlest, she's seven. I do have to still remind her that, it, you know, I'll say, have you cleaned your teeth? And she went through a stage of going, yes, mummy. Have you really? No, mummy. <laughs> you know, and it's getting those little habits coming through. So I love this about your paradigm. And I know it is a is a deeper set thing, but sometimes going to the gym, isn't it? Or rocking up each day to make a phone call um, to cold call some landlords is, is a really big jump. And sometimes that's too much. So sometimes by doing those those smaller things, so it might be, I don't know, so if you're if you're breaking it down, it may be you just um, you know, you make one call, but you've got to have made it by nine o'clock or something. You know, it's understanding your um yourself. And that is so massive. I was listening to another thing this morning, all about sort of coaching and things like that. And it is all about knowing who you are and this goes back to greek philosophy these are not new things are they and that's what you've helped me with lee is i just thought i was like everyone else which is clearly not true um you know i'm 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 my own unique person so the only way i can change is by understanding myself more and one of those things for me was you know i'm very logical so i needed to bring more emotion in um, I really have learned that I wasn't doing the small things. And actually, now I'm building the small things. I feel that there's much more of a foundation um, to then grow those bigger things. Um, and especially within, um, you know, the, the property time, um, I think, yeah, that's that's really, really key. Um, and if, if I might, I know one of the things that you you want to talk about is and this was huge for me when you've talked about goals like a goal has always been to me something that you have to hit mm -hmm. and you've known me for a couple of years lee at the end of the year getting extremely stressed you know from about the third quarter getting very stressed because my goal was so far away mm -hmm. Now, this last year, I didn't hit all my goals. In fact, a lot of them I was still really far away from. But I was still really proud of where I got to. I was not stressed. I was still really open. And the opportunities are still absolutely flowing because I haven't allowed that stress and anxiety and all of those kind of things to block because they can block, don't they? So it's mm -hmm. being able to kind of understand myself. But one thing that you talk about is a goal is actually to grow, it's not to necessarily get. Yeah, absolutely, spot on, Emma. Uh, goals are for us to grow. It's not necessarily for us to get material things. We will get material things, as um, Bob used to say. But the real purpose of a goal is for you to grow. And when you set in big goals like you are, Emma, uh, you're taking a stab in the dark. If, if you set in, like people, a lot of people set, you know, like, really and with all due respect you know very low you know lowly goals they go after what they think they can do or what they know they're capable of achieving very few people are stretching and going after something that's outrageous and when you do do that you're probably going to need some more time even if you set a date to that goal you're likely going to need to give yourself an extension i'll tell you a quick story on in terms of what you just shared uh earlier this week I think it was either Sunday or Monday, yesterday. I looked at my list from 2022. I wrote down 22 things that I wanted to do in 2022. And just like you did last year, Emma, I didn't tick off everything. But I went back and I looked at that list. And I promise you 90% of what's on that list is done. It's, it's achieved. So it's crazy how we set the intention. And even if we don't focus on it or we set something new the next year, when we reflect or we look back, we're like, gosh, bang, that's ticked off, that's ticked off, that's ticked off. I mean, the car that I wanted to purchase in 2022, I didn't purchase it in 2022, but I got to buying it now in 2023. So bang, that was on the list in 20. So, you know, just things like that. Um, you mentioned something also that's really key for all of us to understand. 
the paradigm is a multitude of habits. And yes, you're right, Emma, you've got to work on one or two things at a time. Because if you try and shift too many ideas in your paradigm, you're going to be overwhelmed and not much is going to shift in terms of your behavior. So you want to work on one or two things at a time. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you're trying to grow your property business or any business. And you know that if you change two habits, and it could just be how many people you prospect or how many people you reach out to on a daily basis. And the second thing could be how many sales meetings you have a day. Just those two habits. Now, if you install those two habits, every day I reach out to 15 people, every day I have three sales meetings. If you install those two habits into your subconscious mind, here's a question to you. Do you think your business results will improve? If you do that every single day without fail, and it becomes a part of your habitual nature, do you think your business results will improve? I think so. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, a, a, another thing that is really interesting, um, Lee, that just sort of sprung to mind then is this confirmation that when you have a, a goal for the month, for instance, and you're starting to, to put these, these activities into place, these habits, mm -hmm. um, and then perhaps it gets to the 15th of the month and you, ha you haven't even started to hit that goal. For instance, so I, I met up with a, a group of um, business people last week and there was one particular person who's had a really tough time recently, um, just just in general. And I could hear the words that were being said mm -hmm. and they kept saying, but what happens if I don't hit my target for January? I'm not going to be able to pay the staff. And so it was, you know, obviously we were all having that discussion. It was kind of like, yeah, well, yeah, of course, you know, but what, what can you put in place? What kind of activities can we do? Anyway, so we kept saying, she was like, yeah, I put that into place. I put that into place. So it didn't really seem like there was any reason that this person should not hit their goals by the end of the month. But it just kept repeating. But what happens if I don't hit it? What happens if I don't hit it? And in the end, I sort of said, well, <clears throat> I think you're not going to hit it if you keep saying what happens if I don't hit it, because all you're thinking about is the what ifs, the what ifs. But we actually have to live in like one, the now, the present, because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't. It doesn't matter what's happened in the past. All you can do is is what happened now. And she just didn't get it for a while. And in the end, I said, OK, so if it is a financial thing, if um, somebody was to say, um, if you don't, you know, unless you hit your financial goal this month, somebody's going to take your kids away from you. I said, do you think you'd hit your financial goal? Absolutely, they said. Mm -hmm. so it's like, so therefore, rather than waiting for some terrible event to happen, why not think whatever happens at this moment, what can I do to ensure that I can get there? Um, and at the end of it, she you know, this person did kind of go, oh, yeah, I think so. But we just train ourselves, don't we, to think. And this is the mindset thing. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And actually, you talk a lot about having this kind of faith that you are going to do it. So there's two really key things you mentioned there, Emma. The really absolutely key. Number one is your why has got to be big enough. So if you, you know, this entrepreneur, this individual, if you were to they'd be faced with a proposition or with the uh, enormity of losing their children, they're going to put the foot on the pedal and they're going to get moving for sure. So the thing is, you've got to make your why big because your why is like fuel uh, that's driving you from the inside. Now, it doesn't need to be something as extreme as that. It might be, you know, getting a new home, but something you really want, like you've got to want it from the core, the pit of your stomach, or it could just be to make a difference or to have your business all over the world, whatever it is, 
but you've got to really want that. Like you've got to feel it in every shell of your being. So that's the first key thing you mentioned. Your why has got to be big enough. Number two, and this I'm going to, I'm so glad you mentioned it, Emma. Everything's on time. But doubt and worry is like praying for something you don't want. It's crazy, you know, how someone can set a goal and yet all day, every day, they're thinking about what if I don't eat it? What if this doesn't happen? You know, they now, if you are operating from a state of unbelief, I promise you, <laughs> you're working against yourself. You literally were. The biggest epiphany I had last year, Emma, the biggest epiphany, I was reading a book by Michael Lossier, L-O-S-I-E-R. It's called The Law of Attraction. And in there, he's got a three-step process for deliberate attraction. Three-step process for deliberate att attraction. Step one in his process is you've got to clearly identify what it is that you want. So that's the simple stuff, right? That's the goal, the target you're shooting at, where you're going, right? So that's what you get on, if you carry a goal card, that's what you get onto your goal card and you remind yourself of it. Step two in this process is you've got to give any energy to that desire. Now, Emma, you know, in terms of mindset and many of you listening to this who's in the personal development world will know that you've got to give energy to your desire. You do it by rewriting that goal every day, affirming or auto-suggesting that goal. And for those of you who are not familiar or maybe hearing uh, the term auto-suggestion for the first time, auto-suggestion is a suggestion from yourself to yourself. So you'd go into a room and you'd affirm or auto-suggest your goal, you know, and you want to write your goal in the present tense. So I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning X amount of money. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. It's done. Whatever your goal statement is. And then you affirm it or you auto-suggest it for five minutes or two minutes, however long. You rewrite your goal. You know, maybe when you're in the train on your way to see a client or on the way to a networking meeting, you close your eyes and you visualize your goal. So step two, you give energy to it. Now, step three is the most important step. And like I said uh, earlier, Emma, this was the biggest epiphany I had in 2023. Step three, you've got to allow it. Because <laughs> here's the thing, and in Michael Lossier's, uh, in the book, in his philosophy, he said allowing is simply the absence of doubt. Allowing is the absence of doubt. So this lady, you know, she's getting involved in doubt and worry. You can you can make book on the fact that, that that's going to show up in the way because that's where she's living daily. That's what she's expecting. And what she's expecting is going to move into her experience. Here's a little prop. Uh, are we... Is there a visual representation or are we streaming this via video on all platforms, Emma? Can I, can I show you a prop quickly? Yeah. So here's a plastic three see-through glass. And there's these bamboo sticks and made holes through. And that's holding uh, a bunch of marbles up there. And there's a little hole down here where the marbles can come out. Now, the marbles represent your desire. That's your goals up here. The bamboo sticks, that represents your doubt and your worry. And where the marbles come out here at the bottom, that is the manifestation of your desire. So here's your desire, here's the doubt and worry, and when the marbles come out here, that's the manifestation of your desire. Now, you can have a strong desire, like you can be have clearly identified your goal, you can be giving it energy by auto-suggesting it, affirming it every day. If you're getting in, involved in doubt and worry, so you've got strong doubt, but a strong desire, they're literally going to cancel each other out. Nothing's going to move. 
nothing's going to move down. But if you re remove a bit of this doubt, like if I remove one or two sticks here, some of these marbles will fall down to the bottom and they'll come out. So a little bit of doubt, slow manifestation. But it stands to reason if we remo remove all of those bamboo sticks, if you remove all of the doubt um, with regards to you accomplishing or achieving your goal, the manifestation of it is going to be so much faster. Now, yes, we've got to take action. Yes, we've got to move into action every day. But mindset is so key because even if we take in the action and our expectation is wrong, so you could be reaching out to people, uh, you know, you take in the action, but you're expecting them to say no or you're expecting rejection, what is going to be your experience? So, you know, this, honestly, uh, Emma, it was the biggest thing I... Or the biggest epiphany, I mean, it's it's things you know, but sometimes you just need to hear it again or you need some sort of visual represent, representation. And I've got this on my desk just to remind me that um, the biggest step, the most important step in attracting uh, your ideal business, the amount of money you want into your experience, the most important step is to allow it. And that's simply the absence of doubt. And here's the thing, that third step, allowing, is the least understood step of the three. Most people don't understand it. Yeah, that's amazing. That Yeah, that gives me goosebumps because it is so true. And um, <clears throat> since, you know, you have enabled me to see that literally you are what you think so if you're thinking this isn't going to happen then pretty much it isn't going to happen and in fact my daughter hates it because she says I can't do that and I say yep you're right stop saying that mummy um you know as as we know the, these these are really particular and and actually as you say and as you were talking about I just wrote that you know when you were talking about obviously you you still need to act you still need to take action but what tends to happen is if that why isn't big enough or things are happening in the background that are very distracting and are, you know, causing you concern. So what you see is reality. So maybe an empty bank account or maybe a, a an unhappy situation. When you see those, that, that kind of life can take over. Um, and what I find, and especially in fact, yesterday was a classic example I had lots of things um, that I needed to do. I've got I've got my page open here. You know, I wanted to do some some organizational charts. I wanted to do some follow up on HMOs. Um, I'm, I'm looking to, to be talking about some HMOs on Thursday. So today was the day, you know, I had various things um, that I needed to 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 follow up on to hit my weekly goals. And that was because, you know, in here you can see lots and lots of writing. And that was Monday. And on Sunday, I'd spent a number of hours planning for the week. And on Monday, because I'm really busy this week, I've got a lot on. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had to fit those things in on this day. But what happened was it got to the afternoon and I know myself. I started, you know, I, I drop off. My energy levels dip just, you know, after lunch for a few hours. And so I was doing all those easy bits, you know, the, the quick responses via WhatsApp and people were taking away my time. And suddenly I sat back and I was like, what is the most important things for me to do today? And one thing cropped up that would bring in, you know, quite a hefty sum of money. So I chose at that moment, this is the thing that is most important at this moment. It would be, you know, pertinent for me to, to carry that on. So that was the action that I chose to take. But it was very much a definite action. It was very much, um, you know, controlling where I could have gone and reading myself and seeing that, that the actions that I was taking at that moment were not purpose for me. They were not taking me in the direction that I wanted to. They were not going to get me to hit my goals. And so suddenly I was like, I'm just going to drop all of that. It does not matter if I don't do that for another week. It really doesn't matter. But if I don't pick up this this particular thing now, I could lose that. And then not only am I losing, uh, you know, potentially a financial benefit, but I could also be losing somebody's respect for me because I didn't respond to them in an appropriate manner and I didn't seem keen or whatever. So, yeah, I absolutely 
you know, wholly love this whole thing about seeing, you know, allowing it because we're so held down and that's how I see it by other things going on and they may seem like reality, like I'm not hitting my goal. It seems like reality because in the bank account, if it's a financial one for that month, it, it isn't happening and that is correct. But if you're just sat on that going, oh, it's not happening, it's not happening, it's not happening, it definitely won't happen. Whereas if you're kind of like, bang, I'm going to sit in, and you coined this one for me. I like to sit in my imagined reality. So I like to just sit and think, oh, it's the end of the month and this is what I've hit or I've just signed this agreement or, you know, my mentees have just, you know, taken on another rent to rent. You know, all of those things, that's what I'm thinking. And quite often, you know, I'm really surprised. I'm like, wow, those things have really happened. And in fact, sometimes more. <laughs> it's like, wow, I, I loved that. So, yeah, I really, um, yeah, I, I appreciate you sort of, yeah, following that up because that really was, um, yeah, quite, quite good. So where do you think, Lee, you would take people now with this knowledge that they have? Where do you think um, is the understanding? Would you Would you say that it's kind of, when you're looking at educating yourself, because, you know, for me, that's easy because I'm logical. Mm -hmm. So I read lots of books. I, you know, I do all of those things. But as I saw for many years, it would have been over 40 years. I know I don't look that old, but over 40 years, I wasn't, I was educating myself massively and not getting those results. So can you just sort of talk a little bit more about that? Sure. So, we were raised to defy, defy the intellect. So we go to school, we taught you got to gather all of this knowledge. And you know, knowledge is sacred. And we were sold a lie. And the lie is this, that knowledge is power. Knowledge is sacred, but knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only potential power. Applied knowledge is where the power is. So when you internalize it, and I'll qualify this, you can find somebody with degrees coming off their CV, off their resume, but they cannot find work. And then you'll find somebody who might be a high school dropout, and yet they build a company that operates all over the world. That's proof that knowledge does not necessarily translate into results unless it's internalized, because like I've already said, the paradigm in the subconscious, that creates your behavior 90 96 to 98 percent of our results, our perceptions, and our behavior come from this paradigm, from the subconscious mental program. Only two to four percent Emma comes from the conscious thinking mind. And people deify the con the intellect, the conscious thinking mind, and they think that's where the answer is. And you know, like your experience was similar, my experience was similar. Because we fall in love with this material, we start consuming books, podcasts, you know, video. We start and we, 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 we consume all these books, but we read it once or we read it twice. We feel good, you know, we take it in, but we become top heavy. So where only 4% of your power comes from, we gather all the information there and the main source of everything that's been created in your life, the subconscious, we do not internalize it. So the only way you're going to effectively change your results or um, become who you want to become or achieve that goal that's on your 2024 list is by moving the ideas that are going to get you there into the subconscious. And that's a process. That's a process You've got to get involved, as you have, Emma, in some elite level mindset coaching program combined with professional coaching over a reasonable period of time. And um, you can do it. I mean, I know if Emma could, if I can, uh, if I could, you can. Uh, but it's, you, you know, it's, you've really got to understand the mind. You know, you, our schooling system, our environments growing up have, taught us that, you know, you just got to read something, remember it and repeat it and you've got it. The big question is, are you doing it? And as we get older, right, Emma, we gather more knowledge, we're reading more books, we're consuming. 
but we seem to be doing less. So this gap between what you know and what you do essentially gets wider and the widening of that gap creates confusion and frustration. So, you know, simple example, someone goes on a diet and they go to a party and they've said to everybody, everyone in the family knows they're on a diet. They go to a party and there's beautiful um, chocolate cake. And they just can't help themselves. They go and grab the, grab a slice. And someone says, you know, I thought you were on a diet. And they said, yes, you know, I am. And why are you having the cake? I don't know. I don't know. That's because the paradigm in the subconscious, which has not shifted, creates a behavior. You know, once it's in integrity or you align what you want on an intellectual level versus what's happening in a, in a subconscious habitual level, once you align that, then the behavior is automatic. Like, um, I can tell you my side, uh, exercise is a normal thing for me. I train four times a week. And that's a given. Like, every week it's a given. I don't even need to think about it. In fact, when that doesn't happen, then it feels like something's off. But that's because that's a part of my paradigm. It's a part of my program now. So, you know, you just need the tool set like you have, Emma. Everyone listening to us, you just need the tool set to understand how to move these ideas into your subconscious. Because we all know how to do better. But the big question you need to ask yourself, are you doing it? Amazing. And do you think, as I've got a, a, a question for you. So I was listening to a chap, Ed J.C. Smith, uh, who um, does Expert Coach. And he was talking about, uh, I think it was like a YouTube star. I'm afraid I can't remember his name because I'm not, I'm not that down with the kids. But um, he, he was, he was giving a few examples. But one of them was this, this young, um, seventeen-year-old kid still at college, let's say, and he decided to do some videos. And he did a video of where he was going to be, for instance, I don't know if I'm telling the story exactly, but for instance, in six months time, and then in a year's time, and then in five years time and 10 years time. And these periods have pretty much gone now. Um, and at the end of the six months, uh, you know, he posted that video. And at the end of the year, he posted that video, and then the five years and, and the 10 years. And every single one, you know, you can imagine the first one, you know, he's 17 years old, you know, probably a little bit spotty, a little bit, you know, not really knowing himself, but just had a little vision. And it was something like, um, you know, he wanted to have a million followers or, or something like that. Mm. Um, and then when he, he repost, you know, when he actually posted these videos, I mean, he'd absolutely smashed it out of the water. So, do you think that kind of process, because that's something that to the average person, if you're making that commitment, is kind of something that's really scary. And maybe rather than, you know, we hide away, don't we? We hide away, we write down our goals, we most probably don't even share them. We don't tell anyone else, because if they don't happen, they don't happen. So it may be, you know, as you talked about, you know, needing to allow it, it, it maybe has some blockages there. Whereas you know, this actual action of, of getting out there and really exposing yourself, I suppose, to the world um, actually meant that the results were even bigger. And you, you hear lots of different examples of this. So I just wondered, you know, throwing it back at you, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, was that process, was that part of kind of shifting that subconscious to, to help maybe move things forward? Uh, what, what do you think that kind of process helped with? So here's what I think. This guy put himself on the hook. Now, we let ourselves off the hook. But if you've hired a personal trainer and he's there at 5 a.m. in the morning or you've made a promise to somebody, the likelihood is you're going to follow through with that. You know, if, if you wake up at 5 a.m., it's a bit chilly outside. You don't feel like going out to the gym. You're going to you're gonna turn over and you're going to let yourself off the hook. But if you know you've got a personal trainer waiting for you, you're going to hop up and you're going to get to the gym because there's someone waiting. There's somebody holding you accountable. So all this, what it sounds like to me, Emma, this young man, this young boy at 17, 
he made himself accountable to the entire world because, I mean, he put it out there online. And think of what, what a driver that could be. Um, you know, one of my other mentors, he used to say, tell the whole world about your goal. Like, put yourself on the hook. Make yourself accountable to everybody because that's really going to drive you. Yeah, I absolutely love that. We've got um, Tiffany who has been who's asked a couple of questions. Um, I wonder if I might sort of throw those over to you, Lee. Sure. Um, she has said, I'm currently struggling with overwhelming thoughts of the big picture to replace my income. Um, I'm imagining this is through property. How do I break down that goal so I feel like I can manage this? And then she's put, do you have any recommendations on a book to help with mindset and self-belief to achieve this? Um, I'm going to leave you to do that because I've got an Amazon delivery. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, Emma, the, the lady's name? Tiffany. Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany, great question. So what I'd start with is you've got to add a lot of detail to the goal. So it sounds like you've got a goal. You've defined the income goal that you're going uh, towards, but you want to draw a, a, a picture clearer with regards to that income goal. So that goal would mean that you'd need to serve 10 retainer clients a month, or you'd need to have 10 rent to rent properties or um, whatever it is, right? You need that and this is how what your life looks like you employ in one or two people um but you need my point is basically you need a clearer more vivid picture around what that goal or that state of being is and then how you're going to break it down this is normally my process i know emma's been through it set six action steps so after you've clarified your goal it's crystal clear like i've said then set six action steps in terms of where you are now, the things you can do right now to get moving. Now, a lot of people won't set the big goal because they cannot see the entire staircase to get from where they are to the goal, Tiffany. The thing is you go as far as you can see. And when you get there, you can see further. Like if you're driving from London up to Liverpool, um, you don't see the entire road, but you know if you take this specific highway, and which highway is that, Emma? Uh, if, <laughs> if you take this specific highway, the road unfolds as you, but you know if you keep going down that road, eventually you're going to end up in Liverpool, right? Now, it works similarly with your goals. You just got to go as far as you can see. Anybody who's achieved anything great, when they started out, they didn't know how they were going to get there. But they just took the next step, and when they got there, they could see further, and then they took the next step. With regards to your second part of your question, what book can you read? Um, one I'd always recommend is Think and Grow Rich. But here's the thing, Tiffany, don't just read that book once. Read it over and over and over and over again. I mean, Emma read it five times, and that's impressive. Emma, I think I've read it up well over 40, 50 times already. But... That man, Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich, he interviewed 500 of the world's most successful people in the early 1900s. Amongst them, guys like Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, John D. Rockefeller, Woodrow Wilson, who was one of the U.S. presidents, um, Alexander Graham Bell. I mean, this is a laundry list of hugely impactful individuals. And he studied them over a quarter of a century, 25 years. He worked with them. He tried to understand their philosophy, you know, what made them tick, how they thought. And that's how he created, you know, uh, this book, Think and Grow Rich. And if he, spent, if he spent his entire life, 25 years creating this, I think it would be a prudent move on your part to spend the rest of your days trying to understand this philosophy. But once again, don't become top heavy. Don't just read it to intellectualize the ideas in here. Read it over and over. My mentor, Bob Proctor, he read this book every day for 61 years. I mean, think about that. 
And I mean, it's not like, but he, he'd read a little bit from this book every day. He'd read a little book. Sometimes he'd just open the book at any page and, you know, he'd pick up or he'd read something. But read it every day over and over and over. And I think the key thing as you go through it the second, the third, the fifth time, or however many times you decide you're going to go through it, ask yourself, are you doing it? The ideas he gives you. So like in the desire chapter here, He'd say, you know, write a goal on a card, carry it with you. It's easy to read that and say, you know, that's a nice idea, but are you doing it? That's just a simple thing. There's many, many ideas. There's questionnaires in here. There's just, there's a lot. So this is this would be a, a, a key book I'd recommend for you in terms of helping you to get rid of that uh, doubt and to build up uh, self-belief. I hope that helps you, Tiffany. Definitely. And also, I do, I do recommend as well that if, you know, uh, and, and Lee got me onto this one, that um, uh, uh, Earl Nightingale also has done a, a condensed narration of the book Think and Grow Rich. And if you listen to it on like one and a half times, um, you can listen to it in sort of less than 40 minutes. So it's a really great one to listen to on a on a daily basis and, and Lee is it's quite a stickler um you know so you know make a commitment to listen to it for 30 days and honestly at the end of those 30 days your life will look different I mean it just can't not look different um from having that kind of stuff so that that is, is something that Lee recommended to me I've done it numerous times um, um and then also for you very much um you know from that kind of rent to rent essay point so you're you know, what you want to do is fantastic. You basically want to replace your income. You want to use rent to rent as I presume it's service accommodation. It might be HMOs, but if it's, you know, whichever um, you want to um, and you want to do that by 2025. So this is fantastic. So in this year, you need to be taking some big actions um, and you need to be doing it in the right way. So I just wrote a, a couple of notes down. It's obviously things like accountability. So what we can tend to do, can't we, is we can go on and on and on for weeks and weeks and weeks, but without accountability. So everything that I've done with Lee, um, he always uses a, a weekly um, sort of meetings and things like that, because then you're accountable to people. Um, and, and I think that's absolutely great. I have weekly accountabilities, monthly masterminds, all of these things. Um, so that can sort of help you get on your way. Obviously, you need knowledge. Um, that's that's really key. Um, and, you know, there's lots of places that you can get that. Obviously, mindset. Um, and that really comes down to the way we, we, we think, the way we feel, the way we take action and to really be aware of those. But for you, with your um, with your income, one of the things that really interested me is you said, I want to start in rent to rent and I want to do it by 2025. Now, my my question to you is the reason you're feeling potentially overwhelmed is because there's nothing definite in that. So for me, it's kind of stepping back and having a quick look and saying, OK, so what do I currently earn? Uh, I would highly recommend that you kind of double that because we obviously want you to feel comfortable leaving your job and that security. So I would definitely, you know, whatever you take home, double that. And then generally a rent to rent, you're going to earn between 800 and 1,000 pounds. So just break it down. So if you want an additional, you know, five, 5,000, 10,000, well, then that's, you know, five to seven or, or 10 to 13 properties. So that, you know that now. So there's no starting. You just know that this year in 2024, you need to hit, let's say, eight properties. And that is totally achievable. And then you can start breaking that down. Well, you know, what to, what, resources do I have now? Do I have some money? Can I go and, you know, get a, a, a deal packaged for me where I literally can get going? But more importantly, and, and the one thing that everyone who knows me will know I'm so passionate about is finding your gold mine area. Because what we tend to do is we just look around so far and wide and then it's just too much. It's too overwhelming and we need to niche down. So the same as, you know, knowing that you need eight properties and then knowing that those eight properties are in an area where you know that you just literally open a property there and people are going to be booking it. You're not, you know, that kind of worry and that overwhelm starts to, to go away. So a lot of it is, is yeah, it's definitely having that kind of support um, and knowing yourself. So it may be that actually... Um, you know, a mindset person like Lee is what you need. Um, it might be just knowledge that you need. 
but only you can know these things and quite often it is a tandem thing it certainly was for me I needed everything I needed all the help I could get um but yeah I hope Tiffany that kind of helps you and um I'll definitely after this I'll, I'll send you a link to to a gold mine area and um, I know Lee uh, we're going to share some links um and you can spend a bit more time with Lee as well um, I understand that he's he's going to be doing a um, a webinar uh, shortly. So all of these things are worth you know seeing those opportunities. And I never think you know jumping on a call is there's some reason around it. You know something your vibration and that sounds kooky, but I don't agree that it is kooky. Something will have will have put you on here to hear these things or you will have a conversation and there's a reason that that conversation is had. And we need to exactly like um lee mentioned is this deliberate attraction is you need to allow it so if something is put in front of your face don't just close your eyes and go oh, i didn't see it i didn't see it you know take it you know this could be um you know the reason so uh yeah oh good uh tiffany said thank you very much um uh, okay so i know we're sort of coming up um we've just got a few minutes left lee so i didn't know if you wanted to kind of sort of start to bring this to a close and then I'd really love you to to share how people uh, you know might continue um, learning from you and, and finding out more from you there's a quote that I'd like to end because this is such a, a good discussion uh, Emma around paradigms and programming there's a quote that I often replay by a ma man by the name of Joel Barker. In fact, he wrote a little a book called Paradigms. And he said, in, in, in order to shape your future, you have to be willing and able to change your paradigm. Here's the thing. We're going into 2024. If we're going to operate with the same program, with the same multitude of habits that we did in 2023, we're going to get the same results this year. Guaranteed you're going to get the same or similar, you know, and someone like Tiffany also coming from an, em an employee mindset or corporate career to an entrepreneurial mindset, the shift in that it's two totally different mindsets. And, you know, if you're going to achieve this goal by 2025 and you're going to move into 2024 and um, and start experiencing a movement in the direction that you're going you're going to have to shift your mindset. You're going to have to align your paradigm with what it is that you want. Um, so Emma mentioned the webinar. Uh, I'm running a webinar on Thursday, the 25th, this Thursday. And I think it's at 9 a.m. UK, uh, 11 a.m. South Africa. And during this webinar, I'm really going to get into paradigms. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to give you a model of the mind. If you think the concepts and ideas that we went through here was, you know, mind expanding, what we're going to cover on Thursday is really, really going to stretch you. And you're going to see exactly where your gap is. And, you know, with awareness, with that understanding, that's when you can close that gap between what it is that you know and what you do. Uh, the key takeaways or the learnings from uh, Thursday's webinar, um, it's titled Entrepreneurs, How to Clear the Blocks to Your Abundance. The three takeaways are, I'm going to show you, and once again, I said I'm going to introduce you to a model of the mind. I'm going to show you what the root cause of your current income results, your current business results are, and then I'm going to show you how to change it. Number two, I'm going to introduce you to three different income earning strategies. There's only three different strategies that we can use to earn money. There's two ways uh, in which money is earned, and that's people at work and money at work. But there's only three income earning strategies. And then I'm going to teach you on what's the best one for you to use if you want to grow your income fast. And then number three, I'm going to give you a strategy to turn your annual income into a monthly income. Now, that could seem, I mean, Emma, imagine if you were to earn in 2024, you were to earn what you made in the entire 2023 in one month in 2024. Just makes life easy. And the first time I heard that from Bob, I was like, yeah, you know, that's just so far removed from reality. Um. But I experienced that. I left my corporate career in 2019, 
And in 2020, during the pandemic, in some of the toughest economic climates, I made my entire 2019 annual income in one month in 2020, after being so scared to walk away from my full-time employment. So that's the third thing we're going to get into. So if you want to join us, um, I'm sure Emma's going to pop a link on wherever this is being streamed live to. Click on that link. I know there are only there are only a hundred seats in terms of registration. I think we're up to sixty five already. So if you're keen and you're listening to this, click on that link now. Grab a seat before they fill up uh, because it's a hundred and and that's it. So like I said, we're up to sixty five. And um, you know if this resonates with you, if you want to join us, I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, Emma, thanks thanks once again for uh, for this chat. Uh, I um, I really enjoyed this month's chat. It was. Um, it is amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, Lee. I'm always, I feel very privileged. And in fact, Lee uh, was always somebody um, that I always thought, wow, I'd, I'd love to be able to spend, you know, more time with Lee, um, you know, picking his brains, doing all this. So, you know, when this opportunity arose for me to be able to interview him on a regular basis, um, you know, I just felt very, very grateful um, because it is, it helps me. I've literally, as always, written loads and loads of notes. Um, you know, we, it's all every day for me is a school day, especially around mindset, because I know that that's one of the things that truly holds me back. Um, so, yeah, I really appreciate spending this time with you. So thank you so, so much, Lee. And um, yes, we will, I will get everything out and I'm going to do quite a few posts over the next few days to let everyone know um, what we've spoken about today and also your event on Thursday. So Thursday 9am and the link yeah is in the chat um, in multiple streams which is pretty exciting. We've done well Lee. <laughs> we've, we've been very technologically advanced so um, yes. So again thank you so much everybody and look forward to seeing you again. I'm back on Monday at noon um, and this time I'm talking to Suzanne Smith um, all about being a landlord so yeah look forward to that thanks a lot Lee take care thanks everyone enjoy the rest of the day bye everyone <laughs>